great to see you. Congratulations. What a wonderful, meaty role. Thank you, Bill. And, Thank um, you. you know, obviously, Chris, you get a lot of things coming across your desk, scripts and so forth, and I'd love to know kind of a couple of the things that jumped out at you about Live By Night, about why you wanted to do this. Well, this is really the some of the kind of films that got me interested in. You know, it got me interested in the business, and I'm, I'm talking about, you know, uh, certainly the films of the 20s and 30s, that these were pretty exciting, but coming far more in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, but, and not so much this blue screen explosions and all this stuff. I was just so taken, more interested in human behavior as an actor, and great storytelling, and, um, you know, I'm being I'm being reminded that a story like this hasn't, as a feature film, hasn't been touched on in a good long time. You know, I'm glad to be aboard and, and with a great group of people and, and be able to bring it to a, uh, not just one you know, new generation, but also a lot of us of, of various generations. Yeah. So that's really yeah. terrific. Um, Chief Figgis, wonderful character. Um, in your own mind, and as you've kind of created him, what? For some of the things about him that you know you wanted to kind of play with, and also why do you think he let gangsters like Joe Coughlin, um, you know, operate in Tampa? Um, well, you know, I think uh, Chief Figgis is not a terribly good guy, not a terribly bad guy. Um, I do think he, in his head, he's a strongly religious uh, man, and. Um, you know, he's, he's dealing with a district of Tampa in, called, in Ybor that is multi-racial, multi-ethnic mix of uh, Spanish, Puerto Rican, uh, Italian, black, and we know that uh, there, there are a bunch of under, underground distilleries. We're dealing with the Prohibition era, and I think uh, Irving realizes, you know, there's such a demand, you're not going to stop it. You're gonna, not going to stop it. So, in order to just keep the peace, he'll set up the parameters and the perimeters for people like uh, Joe Coughlin and Dion to work within that area. But circling Ebor is a very um, strong Christian white community and he's got to keep the peace on both sides so he's a man of compromise and uh, I think that's kind of what he's about like a lot of people in the political world even today yeah. uh, you have to deal with yeah. similar situations um, obviously we don't want to give too much away here but um, how do you think that Chief Figgis is sort of transformed by what his daughter Loretta goes through well, um, yeah, considering, you know, what she went through, and uh, I think it just broke him. I think he was so, I think one big place where he worked from was just rage to imagine what had happened uh, and how his daughter had been treated. Uh, I think that just drove him over the edge. A lot, and then to see from, from what she encountered and coming back and getting into the tent revival uh, situation, I think it just, I think it just snowballed. Uh, and um, he lost it. I just had the privilege of talking to that wonderful young actress, Elle Fanning, who just loved working with you. Now talk about that experience, because she's terrific, and you're terrific together in this. She's, uh, good Lord, I mean, she's still, I think she's 18-year-old young lady, and um, what a talent, and I, I got to think that uh, she really comes from a great family, you know? Um, such a solid um, young woman and uh, such a pleasure and uh, great, you know, great talent. And, um, you know, I mean, at, at that young age, uh, to just be so 
open and working so well with um, you know other actors I mean uh, the whole experience was pretty wonderful and really when you see the when you see the scenes they're pretty deeply emotional and um, I really got touched by them as she said the first I think the first day she had to work she had to work with you on that really emotional scene mm -hmm. and she said it was it was great and uh, but it, it got worked her it out good. but I was you know I, I was I was that night before I was tossing and turning I was saying how are we going to shoot this scene what's it going to involve I got no sleep that night but um, you know we Eventually, we covered it in, in many camera angles, but we got it in one take, and, I'm, I'm, and I think it really worked well. It's terrific. It really is terrific. You work with Ben a couple of times now. Yeah. Talk a little bit about working with him at, both as an actor and, of course, as, as your director here. And this, is, this is the third time that ben, I, ben and I have worked together, and the other two were, I live in Massachusetts as well, so the other two films we shot were uh, Company Men, uh, where I first got to, you know, work with Ben and slowly get to meet him, and then I played his dad in um, the Chuck Hogan uh, book uh, called *The Town*, and uh, uh, had a great, great uh, extended prison scene where Dad's doing time in prison, and uh, I think it was the first time that they had brought cameras into Walpole Prison, and. Uh, you know, Ben was directing that film, and uh, it was pretty much the same. Uh, I hope, I, I mean, I realize the great responsibilities that a director has, and, and having worked with one or two other actor, actor writer, directors, um, I realize the load that, that they carry. So my job is to just come with a, a strong idea and hopefully make his work a little less, less harried, you know. 